Right. Okay, hi. I'm John Harbold. Uh, I have an ongoing project where I am porting GeForce into ECOS. ECOS stands for Embeddable Configurable Operating System. It has uh, a real-time component, plus it has drivers and a whole lot of nice things to it. And I want to be able to see if I can get uh, GeForce to run under it. And as it says here, the NetX so far. Okay, one thing that I'm doing is my host system, I, uh, from the last time, I've updated to Fedora 14 under an x86-64 architecture. What I've done there is I have uh, a KVM, a kernel virtual memory system, uh, that I updated to Fedora 14 that runs i386. I then have uh, my ECOS development system running under uh, this virtual system. And what I'm doing is I'm building something called Red Boot. It's uh, much like uh, 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 a bootloader that you can load onto a floppy or a, uh, a USB stick, and you can just run it. And one of the th nice things about it is uh, I want to be able to have GeForce as a command. And the nice thing also about that with Red Boot is I can pass command line options on the command line. Okay. Problem uh, is uh, adding GeForce to the uh, ECOS package directory structure. It's a bit of a bear. Uh, they have something called CDL. It stands for Component uh, Definition Language, which allows you to configure your various aspects of ECOS. And uh, one of the other things is uh, when you boot uh, uh, Red Boot, uh, either from like a floppy or a USB drive, it doesn't support a file system from that device. Uh, I would like to be able to, you know, expand on that. Now, if you want to load uh, fourth blocks, well, you probably have to use the uh, load command, which means you can load it either over a serial line or uh, uh, Ethernet or, you know, whatever. Okay. One of the problems is the ECOS configuration uh, currently is not supported on an x86-64 architecture. Well, if I have time, I probably would like to do that. Also, uh, the aim is to boot from a USB flash drive, but ECOS does not support host USB, only slave USB, which means if you want, you literally can uh, uh, make your own USB device that's running uh, forth in it, and you can do basically whatever you want. There are USB stacks out there, but they need to be ported to ECOS. Okay, and then, like I said before, uh, the four screens cannot be read from a flash drive because we don't have a host interface. So they must be loaded via the load command into memory. Okay. Uh, as I was analyzing the uh, G4 engine, uh, I noticed that uh, you can compile various force screens into, uh, 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 into your force system. The problem is some of those force screens, you know, don't have e I mean, ECOS support. So, you know, that's one of the things I am going to do is get the, uh, be able to customize this uh, uh, startup with, uh, you know, what, what, what I can use. Now, the nice thing about this is Red Boot does not use uh, the ECOS scheduling. Uh, if you look below here, this is the startup. And these are uh, these functions here, uh, the SIG start, pre-start, and whatever. Uh, those are called by uh, ECOS. R Red Boot is a part of the function uh, SIG start. So uh, one of the things that I can do, what's nice about that is I now have something that, uh, you know, can start up and I can do whatever initialization I need to do. 
Now, when, one of the things I want to do is I want to get G fourth when it starts up, it starts and the scheduling starts up, it runs as the highest priority task. What that allows you to do is if you have any other lower priority tasks, they'll get preempted and you can go out and examine them. You know, like how much stack space is used, uh, what their task state is, uh, and whatever. Now, you probably want to be able to start this. Well, I'm going to add another uh, fourth word uh, to be able to start the uh, scheduling. So these other lower priority tasks start executing while this, while G4th uh, is suspended. But you also want to be able to have a way of unsuspending uh, G fourth, and I'm just probably going to use something uh, a semaphore and control C, such that when you hit control C, uh, this semaphore gets activated and uh, the uh, scheduler will get uh, halted. And like I said, you could examine stack usage, priority, uh, next fourth word to be executed. You can debug a task if you wanted. Okay, uh, last time uh, I tried this, uh, I couldn't get Red Boot to reliably boot. Uh, either it wouldn't boot or it would take like two minutes to run before I'd get the Red Boot prompt. Well, I solved that through the uh, ECOS configuration. And now, like I said, it boots consistently. And uh, again, uh, I. Uh, we'll be looking for a USB host stack that I can use, which will also include OTG, which is on the go. And I hope uh, anybody out here don't know what OTG is. I get, okay. Okay, what it does is a USB uh, interface can either be a host interface, like on a uh, computer where you plug devices into it, or it can be a device which you put hosts into it. Well, say you have like a, like a phone, you know, and you want to you don't have a computer around. Well, what you do is you can now make this guy have an OTG interface, so that it can pretend to be a host, and you use the same interface. And so, if you want, you could, you know, load pictures, uh, songs, whatever, and then when you're done, just unplug it. So that's one of the other things that like I said I want to get. Uh, going on that. Also, the other capabilities of ECOS, because I want to take advantage of the ECOS uh, system library, uh, I wanted to get dynamic libraries working. Uh, also, ECOS has PCI, so I can examine the PCI bus. Uh, it has USB slaves, so if I want, I can have a USB you know, device, whatever. What's also nice is you can develop your stuff, say, on a PC. And then once you get your application working, you can port it to a different architecture. And then the only thing there you have to do is uh, if you're uh, talking to, a, say, a different USB uh, device, well, you just all you have to do is just change the uh, uh, USB driver. And uh, the thing should work, should. And this is my new excuse why I haven't been able to, uh, to get things working is uh, I'm fixing other people's big wheel except mine. And uh, when I get the time, yes, I will get this thing working. It's just that... Uh, in this, job. Well, yes, and in this economy, uh, one must uh, stoke coal to uh, make that money. Okay? And that's it. <laughs> now, with any luck... Uh, uh, maybe the next one, I might have uh, the ability just at least to execute uh, G4 without, uh, you know, not, I won't have the scheduling working, but at least I'll have some, uh, 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 you know, a user interface where you can just start writing forth code. All right? Okay, guys, uh, who's the next nebbish? We're going to take a short